Shalom and welcome to another Bible study and we will be continuing in the prophecy of the revealing of the 144,000 first fruits resurrected those saints Matthew 27 51 52 now in the last study uh, that I uploaded to YouTube uh, uh, people uh, I have been uh, teaching this prophecy for several months and and I haven't uploaded anything to YouTube for several years uh, but I've continued in my studies uh, while I have been absent from YouTube there's so many things going on as we know what the, we are at the end of the age we are uh, in the days of Noah the Messiah said uh, so uh, the door is about to be shut on the Gentiles, the fullness of the Gentiles. Then you'll have the two witnesses stand up to prophesy for the last three and a half years. Now, in our last study about the prophecy of Matthew 27, 51, 52, uh, you know, I know that for people that's going to see these uh, videos, and uh, I understand uh, there is plenty of uh, different uh, denominational teaching or different sects of denominations that they believe they're the 144,000. I understand that. I did not realize that that much until the Lord revealed to me who the 144,000 were. Now, in the uh, prior video that I went to Brother Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 and revealed the he reveals that uh, the gospel is to preach not only the resurrection of Christ but the resurrection of the dead saints so that's mentioned in, in Matthew 27 51 52 now the reason that most people or even commentaries do not touch that and especially there's not much about that on in social media but God is now revealing things that's been hidden or been lost because uh, he is going to restore the things that's been lost as we enter the end of the age here. Uh, now, the prophecy that I'm going to talk to you about, Simeon, tonight is, uh, is the same prophecy that, that Paul was a witness to. The resurrection of the dead saints, people. Now, Paul reveals that those saints uh, are first fruits. Now, <clears throat> when when I listen to uh, preachers or teachers that talk about the hundred and forty-four thousand first fruits, uh, which a lot of them believe, like I said, that they their assembly or or whoever they belong to, uh, they say they're the 144,000. Uh, I think after reviewing these uh, uh, videos and the scripture which I will give, you'll see without a shadow of a doubt that uh, they are not. Never have been, never will be. Now, uh, also, there is teaching in spiritual Israel that uh, the church or they are the uh, assembly and they are the uh, 144,000 and that number is not an actual number it's actually a figurative number a symbolic number which is also incorrect people <clears throat> you know under the Hebraic understanding of scripture there's four levels the first level is Peshat, uh, in which we're, this is uh, mostly, and the first level being uh, a level when you're studying is a literal interpretation. In other words, uh, you always look at the scripture uh, literally. And then if there is, uh, you can go to the next uh, several levels which which would entail allegories or 
or similes or uh, parables, uh, spiritual understanding. But always, always start with the first interpretation, which is literal. See, people, and a lot of people's got away from that. They think that you've got to spiritualize everything in the scripture. Uh, but that's not true, people. So uh, now, there again, I'm just trying to summarize this about the 144,000 because uh, I'll be truthful. With you, I did not realize how many people actually thought they were the 144,000. Uh, you know, and so when when the Holy Spirit revealed to me through Jeremiah's prophecy, uh, which he prophesies uh, uh, Rachel weeping for her children there, Jeremiah 31, uh, 15, 16, 17, there's actually three prophecies about Rachel weeping for her children. So when I went back there and studied that, and then understanding uh, Matthew 27, 51, 52 is the same thing Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, and now discovering this unbelievable prophecy was Simeon, that he prophesies uh, the same event or, or the same people. Uh, then uh, when you go to Revelation 7 and Revelation 14, then John reveals that there's 144,000 of them, 12,000 from each tribe, starting with uh, Judah, uh, Reuben, Gad, uh, Asher, and then uh, finishing with Joseph and also uh, Benjamin. See, now, uh, and every man is on order, Paul says, according to the resurrection. Now, when we talk about firstborn, first fruits, uh, the firstborn male, when you go back into Torah, would always should always receive uh, the blessing from the Father. But when you trace and go all the way through the Scripture, you see that that it was the secondborn because something the the firstborn always messed up. Of course, Christ now is the firstborn begotten; he doesn't mess up. See, he, he gets the inheritance uh, through the Father. But, you know, through the lineage of Israel, and and uh, uh, you see that uh, there's a lot of the secondborn that inherited the blessing, and the firstborn didn't. So, but when you interpret firstborn or firstfruits, you also have those interpreted uh, according to the resurrection. Now, in other words, Christ is the firstborn from the dead. Now, he's the only begotten. He's the word made flesh. So, uh, so we know uh, that he was made lower than the angels and made as the son of man or made as the flesh in man without sin. But also, when he resurrected, he the Bible says he was the firstborn in the new creation or begotten from the dead. Resurrected from the dead now, people. Now, so that would make the saints in Matthew 27, 51, which none of theology or preachers... Uh, None of them will touch that prophecy, people, because uh, the the other witnesses to that prophecy, which God is revealing now, has been hidden. And, of course, we're going to see in the three parts of Simeon, the three prophecies out of one verse that Simeon prophesies to Mary uh, in Luke 2, we're going to see that tonight, that the third part of that prophecy it would be disputed and denied. In other words, it would be covered up. And so, and then Brother Paul says uh, that the mystery of iniquity does already work. Now, the mystery of iniquity, people, is Torahless. In other words, no instruction, uh, no Torah. Torah means instruction. So there again, uh, kind of touching back on the last uh, video, do you believe? Uh, Christ died for our sins and was buried according to scriptures and rose again rose on the third day uh, according to scriptures. 
what scriptures? The Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms. Now, I will hammer that scripture over and over and over, people. Because that's the secret to understanding or where all of these treasures are buried in the Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms, people. Because God's got to open our mind to those scriptures for us to understand what's going on, people. Because Christ said he would fulfill everything written concerning him in the first five books of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms. It's all in there. So that's prophecy. The spirit or the testimony of Yahshua is prophecy. It's not, to, it's not to give a word of knowledge and tell somebody, uh, you know, what's going to happen to them in two weeks or two years. That's not prophecy, people. Uh, prophecy is the spirit of, of the master to prophesy the scripture, what the scripture is saying. So, and the Holy Spirit has to lead God, direct us into that. But Christ gives us all of the signs and the tools that we need to, uh, if we're following his instruction, see. So when so when somebody talks about the resurrection, it's according to the scriptures, people. And so Christ died for our sins and was buried according to the scriptures. That's according to Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms. Every bit of that is in there how he would die exactly, and how he would be buried exactly. And how he would raise on again the third day, according to scriptures, which is first fruits. Now, I'll briefly go over this, and then I'm going straight to Simeon. Uh, there is seven feasts of the Lord, and he created these uh, appointed fixed times in Genesis, uh, the first chapter, the 14th verse, when he created the stars and the moon and the, and the sun, and these were times of seasons, days, and years. But the word season is not winter, summer, spring, or fall. It's, it's, that has nothing to do with it because during Noah's day, there was no such thing as heat and cold. I've talked to you a little bit about that. A lot of people don't realize that. That did not happen after the flood. Now, we're going back in the days of Noah, Christ said, when he comes back to set up his kingdom. So understanding what he says, we're going back, and there's going to be shorter days and shorter nights, and there's not going to be any heat or cold, people. Now, how do I know that? Because the master, the, the master teacher of the scripture said, so it will be as in the days of Noah, that word as is exactly like uh, when he comes to set up his kingdom. So God is fixing to do a tremendous work on his, uh, uh, on his creation, which is the sun and the stars and the moon and the earth. Now, I, Lord willing, later on, I will get into that prophecy of how he's going to shorten the days. But that will take us into a whole different teaching uh, that a lot of people don't really understand that either. But the point I'm saying to you is, uh, God created these fixed appointed times, and he has seven feasts. And Christ came in his first advent at the appointed fixed time uh Passover, at the appointed one, that Christ was to die at a fixed appointed time. Now, I talk to people about this, and and when I teach small groups, I do a lot of one-on-one, -on -one because you just got to go back to the scripture and go slow and show people scripture, because they've never seen this before, people. Most people, in, and especially in the West, because they've sat under a dom denominational teaching, which I was uh, raised and was a member of, but... When I left that and then started gathering things, uh, uh, tools, uh, concordances, and, and translations of, of, of different uh, scriptures, and then over the years, uh, you know, by spending uh, many, many hours of studying uh, and being obedient to the Messiah, then he will open your eyes. Uh, so this is what this is about, and I'm going to share th uh, this with you because it's unbelievable and for you people that are feel that you are part of the 144,000 and or you're spiritual Israel and you think the church is 144,000 or 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 whatever uh, all I can do is ask that you when you listen to this video and you take the scripture of what I'm fixing to give and uh, you let the scripture teach 
because I, I'm going to give you scripture uh, that you ain't seen before. Uh, just like with Paul, there's not many people uh, uh, that understand uh, that uh, that Paul was speaking of the resurrection of the dead 2,000 years ago. He's not speaking of us there in 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, so when Christ came and at the appointed fixed time, uh, he died on the 14th day of Nisan and at Eve and was put in a tomb, and then he rose again on the third day, according to scriptures, which is first fruits. Because he fulfilled, uh, he fulfilled Passover, unleavened bread. Uh, he was a bread from heaven, without sin. And then it, when he was raised three days uh, later, then he fulfilled first fruits. And by filling first fruits, uh, the shadow being the barley that the priest would cut and offer to Yahweh as a first fruit offering in the spring was the barley crop. The wheat didn't come along until 50 uh, days or so later uh, than that was at the Pentecost or Feast of Weeks or Feast of Oaks. And then they would also offer the wheat uh, to Yahweh as first fruits. So, but... So when Christ resurrected on the third day, people, he's filling, fulfilling Torah. Uh, then those were his first fruits in Matthew 27, 51, uh, that, that their graves were broke open when, when Christ died. The Father marked 144,000 graves with 144,000 dead saints laying in those graves uh, and when Christ come out of the tomb three days later, according to the scriptures, the Bible says that they come, they was raised from their tombs and went into the holy city and appeared to many. And they were resurrected with a glorified body, people. You, you know, now, some people that talk about the resurrection of the saints, they say, well, we don't know what happened to them. Uh, they died like Lazarus. We do know what's happened to them, and we will we will see what the Scripture says about that because it's in the Scripture. Uh, there again, uh, you got to think. Well, if they died like Lazarus on this side of the cross, which is the resurrection. Now Jesus did raise Lazarus from the dead, and he died. And Peter raised from the dead. Paul raised from the dead. So. There was great miracles about that, but they died again. Now, when Christ was raised from the dead, he was raised to a, a, a spiritual body. We know that, to a glorious body. Well, think about it, people. Everybody that he raises to, uh, from the dead on in the start of the new creation, if those saints that was resurrected in Matthew 27 wasn't given glorious bodies like the Messiah, then we don't have a lot of hope there, people. Because that means that, uh, what would that be the difference in us? We would be raised uh, 2,000 years later, and we've been promised immortality. So there's no way that that would line up. But there again, uh, we will let the Scripture decide that. But I'm just trying to bring a little, some of the arguments and some of the disagreements that you hear out there. Uh, but when you understand this 144,000 is God's first fruits and Christ raised them from the dead through Christ, they was raised from the dead 2,000 years ago and they have been in heaven with him for 2,000 years and now he's coming back to resurrect his wheat. For he says in Matthew 13, let the wheat and the tares grow up together for the harvest is at the end of the age, not the end of the world. It's the end of the age and that's we're about to enter the last three and a half years of tribulation and the witnesses will die and then the resurrection will come. So when Christ came in his first event, the first full feast, he fulfilled uh, Passover. He was unleavened bread. He was without sin. He, he fulfilled the resurrection on first fruits, but not just his resurrection. He had his first fruits that he resurrected. And then when he ascended to heaven 40 days with his first fruits, uh, 10 days later, 
by the promise of the Father, he, he sent the Holy Spirit, and this gospel of the kingdom would be preached to the nations as a witness, and the end would come. Now, the thing that we've got to understand, that is the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom. Now, there's another gospel, and there's another spirit, and there's another Jesus preached, people. So what what this is about is revealing the truth of what the scripture says. So there again, for you people that will hear this, whoever God has to hear it out there in social media land, uh, I know there's a lot of uh, recordings on who these 144,000 are, or if you think you're part of it, uh, then uh, just let the scripture guide you and then repent of that, people, and believe and teach the true gospel of the kingdom. Okay, so that's what we're going to uh, show in these studies, see. So I'm not I'm not throwing rocks at anybody, uh, and even those I've had uh, the biggest thing I have told to me over the years of of showing uh, scripture to people. Well, Larry, I've been, I'm ignorant. My preachers never showed me that, or. I've never, I don't, I've never seen anybody, or I, I, I don't know anything about that. Well, you know, the Bible says that God winked at our ignorance before He sent His Son. You know, He winked at, at ignorance over paganism and stuff, but He don't wink at ignorance anymore because, see, He sent His Son, and He's turned all judgment over to His Son. So we're not going to be able to stand before Him one day and say, "Well, you know, I never did hear that, Lord." I mean. Uh, but you heard the other message. But see, there's one thing that the Bible teaches in 2 Timothy 2.15. We're all commanded to study. Study is an imperative mood in the Greek. That's a command. It's not your preacher supposed to study. Everybody, if you're listening to, your, uh, to a teacher, preacher, bishop, but see, everybody listening or everybody that's so-called accepted Jesus Christ, you're supposed to study your scripture as Bereans. Rightly divide God's words of work and be not ashamed, the Bible says. So we, you see, you can, none of us are going to be able to get by with, well, I didn't know that, or, or, or nobody ever told me that when God has furnished us everything now. You know, isn't it amazing the Lord's given us all the signs of the things that he has told us is going to happen before he returns, and uh, all kinds of signs there. Matthew 24, Luke 21, uh, Luke 17, uh, Mark 13, uh, Revelations, all kinds of uh, 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 signs. And yet when Noah, when God told Noah to build an ark, that he's going to bring 40 days and nights of rain and a great flood upon the earth, did you know, people, uh, it ain't ever rained before. <laughs> now, what kind of faith did Noah have to have? And now God's given us all these signs. You know, earthquakes and pestilence and and wars and kingdoms against kingdoms, rulers against rulers, and the days of Noah will be, uh, you know, stay on watch, be on watch, uh, you know, all of these signs, and especially the feast of the Lord, because he's already fulfilled the first four feasts, he's going to fulfill the next three, you see, so God's given us everything, so we will not have... Uh, we, we, he will not excuse us because uh, when we stand before him and 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 uh, and say, uh, "Well, I never heard that," or "My preacher didn't tell me that," or or what, because you're you're supposed to study your scripture. So when I give you this scripture uh, through the Holy Spirit, and you and you study it and look at it, test it. See, if you looked at the first video now. I will say this, I get to talking fast sometimes, I try to slow down, and I'll, mis I'll misquote a scripture or, or say something and put a chapter or a verse, reversal. Uh, so, I mean, I'm human just like everybody else. And I do not, uh, this, is, this is done live. This is, uh, you know, it's, I'm guided by the Spirit here. I don't have a, a certain thing I'm looking at, and I might read some things from me, but whatever comes out of my mouth is what what I'm talking about. So and that's why I might wonder here and back there, but it all ties together. 
So from from Genesis, we're kicked out of the garden. We go back into the new garden, the new heavenly Jerusalem that comes down to earth to end the book. So God removes us at the front of the book, and we go back in at the end because he's declared the end from the beginning, people. We were in the garden in the beginning, and he's declared the end from the beginning, so we're going back to the end of the book. We're going back into the, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the new heavens and the new earth. Okay, now, so now I've talked to you about uh, Jeremiah's prophecy. I've talked, I've talked Paul about Paul and the resurrection and what he uh, taught, same thing. Got to preach the resurrection of Christ, the resurrection of the dead. Now we're going to uh, we're going to move in uh, to Brother Simeon, and uh, and we're and I'm going to reveal that scripture to you. And also, as I'm doing that, I will be moving back and forth into Matthew and back and forth into Jeremiah. Uh, so uh, you can stop the recording, play it back, and uh, write the scriptures down because I want you to test them. I want you to test them with a very, uh, uh, with with uh, Berean eyes, in other words, uh, because uh, uh, you know that's what we need to do. We we need to we, we are to uh, you know sharpen the sword, and we are to study, and we are to be like minded, and so I'm hoping if the same Jews or Messianics that hear this prophecy. Uh, then it will pro provoke them to jealousy, people, because I am telling you that God's first fruits, when he resurrected Christ and through Christ, he resurrected 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe of, of Israel, every man in his own order. And they are the only ones that can sing that song in Revelation 14. They are the only ones. And so for any of you Jewish people that happen to hear this, uh, may God open your, 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 your mind to understand this. And Brother Simeon and the prophet Anna are the two witnesses when the Messiah comes to the temple here that we're going to start on now in Luke 2 starting in verse 23, people. And so the two witnesses is uh, the devout man Simeon and the prophecy Anna. Now I will not get into the prophecy Anna tonight uh, uh, because there's so much here. But I will do a, a recording to follow up with the prophecy Anna, and you're not going to believe the, the things about that. Just like Simeon, I'm going to read to you see some historical writings about Brother Simeon. Uh, so this is unbelievable, and there again. Uh, may God open your eyes or those that hear this. This is a, such a huge blessing, people. Uh, you know, and there again for you people that have been misled thinking that you're the 144,000. Uh, the door hadn't been shut. Just repent and believe the gospel of the kingdom, people. Don't be, don't, don't stiff, be stiff neck near and heart. You're not fighting me. You can stone this message, but you're not fighting me. I'm just a vessel, you know, uh, uh, that, it, that the word comes through. You're fighting the creator. So, you know, and one of the greatest sins all mankind, including myself, have, we don't like to be corrected because of pride. And of course, you know, Pride, God hates. So now as we move into this huge prophecy with Brother Simeon, as one of the witness and, and the prophet Anna, as the second witness, and Simeon being a devout man from Jerusalem, we're going to see, is from uh, the southern kingdom. And the Bible tells us that Anna was from the tribe of Asher, the northern kingdom, and her father was Penuel. Now let's pick it up in verse 23. And uh, we will see that as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opened the womb shall be called holy unto the Lord. Now, just think about that. See, there is a period of innocence there on children. And, and the Bible says here that the male child that opens the womb of, of the mother to the creator is, uh, 
is holy unto Yahweh. That means uh, Haggai's. That means pure in uh, Yahweh's eyes. So there is a, a, a time of innocence uh, before we move into the time of accountability, of course, when we sin, transgress. But, uh, and think about this. Uh, you, when the Bible doesn't contradict, because the Bible says that we're conceived in, in our mother's womb, that's true. But there is a period of innocent innocency uh, with a, a young child uh, before they can talk, uh, before they can, uh, you know, uh, uh, disagree, or before they can come accountable to people. That's what the Bible says right here. The Lord, they are holy. They are innocent during this time period. Okay, let's look at 24. To offer sacrifice according to that which is said, the law of the Lord, or Moses' law, a pair of turtle doves or two pigeons. So they were there to sacrifice in the temple. Now, there's one uh, unique thing about understanding Christ's age even at this time, which is something we need to think about. He was circumcised on the eighth day. The purification of a woman, according to the male child that she has, is 33 days, according to Torah. Now, you might not have ever heard that. So that would put Christ at about 40 plus days old here. So it's important. Christ was young, but he was about 40 days old. Uh, at this time. Now in verse 25, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man, just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. So he was filled with the Holy Spirit, people. Uh, very paramount to understand this. So uh, he had the Holy Spirit that was upon him, the Bible says. Uh, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now, let me interject here real quick uh, some things that I had printed out doing some research about righteous Simeon. And I will touch on this because this lines up with Scripture. And uh, this comes from uh, the Orthodox uh, uh, Coptic Christians and it says that Simeon uh, righteous Simeon was according to the testimony of the Holy Evangelist Luke and we just read that scripture uh, 225 God promised him that he would not die until, uh, the, uh, until the promised Messiah Christ the Lord came into the world now the scripture says that so now ancient historians tell us that the Egyptian pharaoh, Palami of the Second, Philadelphia, 285-247, wished to include texts of the Holy Scripture in the famous library at Alexandria. He invited scholars from Jerusalem and the Sanhedrin to send wise men. Now, this writing, people, says that the righteous Simeon was one of the 70 scholars that translated the Hebrew text to the Greek text, which we have today, which I've been studying for years, uh, is the Septuagint, the L70, uh, LXX. Is that unbelievable or what? Now, we also know, uh, according uh, to historical facts, that this translation uh, from the Hebrew to the Greek was 250 to 80 years before Christ came. So what are you saying, Larry? Well, what I'm saying is the historical writings say that Brother Simeon was not only a devout uh, man, but that he was a scholar that translated, helped translate the Old Testament into the Greek uh, Septuagint, which Christ even spoke out of when he spoke Greek, and which many uh, scholars use today and have used and it was uh, translated 280 so years before Christ. Now they go on to say that Simeon died at about 360 years old, people. Now I know a lot of you can laugh about that or make jokes about it or whatever you want to do. But see, I believe that. It's not a coincidence. See, Brother Simeon was a witness, a scholar, 
Uh, and guess what? Uh, he was told he would not die. Now, also in that writing, it said that when he was translating a verse out of Isaiah, where the verse called Mary a virgin, he was about to translate that word virgin from the Hebrew to the Greek as Mary a woman. And it goes on to say that the uh, uh, that the historians say that an angel stopped his hand and told him that he would not die until he seen the Virgin Mary and Yahshua, the, his salvation. And guess what? That lines perfectly up with Scripture. So I just wanted to bring that in. That Simeon, you know, we don't hear much about Simeon. People never have. There's not much taught about uh, Simeon out there. He's only mentioned one time, but now God is revealing these unbelievable things. Now, let's get back and see a dunamis, unbelievable revelation of one scripture that he's going to prophesy to uh, Mary. Okay, so we continue now. <clears throat> Verse 27, and he came by the spirit in the temple, and when the parents brought in Yahshua to do to him the custom of the law. Now, now the Bible says when he come into the temple, he was full of the Holy Spirit. It, it, that's, I mean, in other words, the Bible don't say, it says the spirit came in here. Uh, then he took him up, he took Yahshua up in arms, and he blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou the servant depart in peace according to thy words. See, everything is now according to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, every word is coming out of his mouth now, is according to the Holy Spirit. Simeon now is not even, I mean, he, everything he's going to say now is, is through the Spirit of God. And the next verse in 2.30 uh, of Luke for my eyes have seen thy salvation. Salvation there in the Hebrew is, uh, Hebrew is Yahshua. Yahshua means salvation. So he has not only seen the salvation of Israel, the glory of Israel, but he's also seen his salvation. And he's also seen uh, the salvation of all people, uh, those yet. Uh, are added to the Messiah and follow the Messiah, see, and believe and teach the gospel of the kingdom uh, to all nations as a witness now. You are a witness to the death, the burial, and the resurrection on first fruits. That's how powerful this is. Uh, and if you listen to what I, I, I did in the first video about Paul, uh, if you didn't, if you, if the Holy Spirit didn't reveal you, please go back and play it again, play it again, and ask for the Holy Spirit to open your mind, because Paul is not talking about our resurrection future. He's talking about what happened back uh, when Christ was resurrected, when he resurrects these dead saints. Okay, now, we're going to see here next that Simeon says, He's a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Now, everything is in order here because he is speaking by the Holy Spirit here, faithful. Now, why would it be that he would mention that Yahshua would be a light to lighten the Gentiles first and then thy glory people or the glory of thy people Israel? See, that doesn't even fit, does it? But it does if we study the Scripture. Now, when you go back to Matthew, the second chapter, in the 13th verse, we're going to see that the angel told Joseph to take his family, Yahshua and Mary, and flee to Egypt. Why? Because we're going to see in the 18th verse of the second chapter of Matthew that there was a prophecy fulfilled uh, that that prophecy that was fulfilled was Rachel weeping for her children, people. Because, and they were not. Why? Why did Joseph, the angel, tell Joseph to flee with his family to Egypt? Because Herod 
had put out a decree to kill all two-year-old male Israelites in about a six-mile uh, circumference there, or, or six miles uh, uh, of uh, Bethlehem, Judea, and the coast thereof, so that he could make sure that he killed Christ. Why? Because he didn't want any competition from another king, and because uh, the Magi had crossed him up, because they were supposed to go and tell Herod where this child was at, so Herod could come and pay honor to him, yeah, so Herod could come and kill him. So the angel told the Magi to go back the other way. So Herod was wroth. And, of course, this is all by the counsel of God, see. Because, see, they he sealed 144,000 first fruit, two-year-old male people and under. That's in Revelation, the seventh chapter. So he sealed them and numbered them and give every order. Because Judah was not the firstborn. Reuben was. But Judah is mentioned first, Reuben is mentioned second, Gad's mentioned third, uh, uh, Asher's mentioned fourth, and as you go through the order, then you got Joseph and and uh, Benjamin last. And of course, Rachel died giving birth to Benjamin in uh, Israel, the only son that was born in Israel. Uh, and of course, his mean means his name uh, means tribulation. See, Paul was a Benjamite. Much through much tribulation, we enter the kingdom. So Rachel died giving birth uh, uh, to Benjamin, that comes from the southern kingdom. So see, Rachel was weeping for her children, but Joseph and Benjamin represent the twelve tribes of the children of Israel people, because Joseph through Ephraim, and, uh, was uh, the northern kingdom, and then Benjamin represents uh, the southern kingdom. So you got both houses there. Isn't that unbelievable? And, and also, I'll go ahead and tell you uh, that Rachel was uh, Jacob's first love, even though it, uh, his father-in-law uh, deceived him at the night of his wedding when he sent Leah, the older daughter, in, and, Ra and Jacob had to work another seven years uh, for Rachel. So it wasn't, Leah was not mentioned weeping for her children. It was Rachel. Also, R Rachel, supposedly by the writing of the Jews, uh, died on the 10th day of Buell, people. That's the month of the flood. And guess what? Although Methuselah is also recorded to die on the same day. See, now, so all of this is uh, amazing understanding. And it has exact uh, prophecy and meaning with it. So there again, uh, the, when Christ went into Egypt as a young child, uh, there is uh, writings that I have read that that also uh, they confirm that when they moved from place to place in Egypt during the slaughter of the holy innocent childs that were being slaughtered by Herod back in Jerusalem in that area there, that uh, some towns and places he went in, it's recorded by the Coptic Christians that some of the pagan temples just collapsed by his glory, even as a child, people. Now, we don't have any of those writings, but they do. Uh, so they would surely know because they are mentioned right here in Scripture. See, So that's the reason Brother Simeon uh, prophesied they would Christ would be a light to lighten the Gentiles and then the glory people of Israel, the glory of Israel. Because uh, why? Because the scripture says he, he he fled to Egypt. Now, the Coptics also record people, this is unbelievable, that it took three and a half years for Herod to slay and for the sealing of the father of these children. Uh, three and a half years, people. And then he comes back uh, to Israel and to Nazareth, the Bible says, to fulfill another prophecy by a prophet, Hosea, Hosea 11.1, 1, see. So th this is unbelievable. Now remember, he's got to open our mind to the scriptures, the Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms, because everything recorded in there, he will fulfill. Now just think, he's fulfilling Jeremiah's prophecy. He's fulfilling Hosea's prophecy. And, and Simeon is fixing uh, to prophesy 
of what is fixing to take place here, people. Unbelievable prophecy that's, that I'm fixing to reveal here through the Holy Spirit. It's going to reveal it to you. Uh, that also is is out of the Torah, which is the resurrection of first fruits the third day according to scriptures. That's out of Leviticus 23. See, and it's unbelievable. And this is how that God has opened my eyes to these scriptures because I followed his instructions. See, go back to the Torah, the prophets and the Psalms. Everything's in there. Then come to the uh, end of the book and and everything will complement and and will match. And then you will you will understand what is going on and the purpose and, and these prophecies that's being fulfilled. Now, very important. Got a little bit of time left here. Very important. Uh, uh, verse 33. And Joseph and his mother uh, marveled at the things that were spoken of him. As, as uh, of Christ that Simeon was prophesied. Now we go to verse 34, people. 34 is a dunamis scripture. And in the, that means power. In other words, it's like dynamite. Is so powerful. Now, pay close attention, people, and turn your Bibles to Luke, the second chapter, the 34th verse, and the power of God is fixing to, to, to completely uh, explode here, in other words. All right, now, Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, all his focus now is on Mary. He was talking to Joseph and Mary, but now he is focusing in straight to Mary, the mother of Yahshua, because this is what is fixing to take place shortly. He's prophesying. Let's read again. Verse 34. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Now people, uh, in the English, when you read this, and it's been read over for hundreds of years, I've read it, read it, read it, uh, but until, the, until it was time for the Lord to reveal this to me, uh, then it happened. And of course, what revealed to me the 144,000 first fruits that were resurrected in Matthew 27, 51 was Jeremiah's prophecy, people. Because, see, the first part of Jeremiah's prophecy, 31, 15, was fulfilled in Matthew 2, 18. But, see, there's two more verses there in Jeremiah. Very important that you look at those. The second verse is the same verse uh, Simeon's talking about here. The second verse of Jeremiah said... The first verse said that Rachel's weeping for her children and because they are not. They're dead. Herod killed them all. And now the second verse in Jeremiah 16 says, uh, God says, or the prophet, the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, through Jeremiah said, don't weep anymore, Rachel, for they will come again in the land of their enemy and be rewarded. Now what, now what does that mean? Now, in the Hebrew, come again means come back come back from the start. So what I'm saying to you is, now let's tie that in with what is said right here. Now, very important. I want us to go to where in the second part of 34. He says, behold, this child, Yahshua, is set. Now, the Greek for the word uh, set means appointed or set. It means that Yahshua is responsible, in other words. Or in other words, it's the catalyst. See, you say, you know, okay, what is this about? So Yahshua is set, appointed for this fall. This, the word fall means a great crash. Okay. In Israel, in Jerusalem there. Uh, it's only used two times in the uh, New Testament, people. Now let's think. All right, now we've been studying. So let's think. Why would Yahshua be uh, the catalyst or be appointed for this great fall in Jerusalem? This great slaughter. Oh, now you, you understand what I'm saying? So when you go back to Matthew 2, you see the angels told uh, Joseph for Mary and Yahshua to get to Egypt because Herod's fixing to come and kill him. But to make sure that he kills Yahshua, He's going to kill all the two-year-old males and 
under. See, that's the fall, people. That's the great crash. But, see, man continues. Not only is the child set for the fall, but he is set for the rising again of many in Israel. You follow me? Now, you will never in a hundred years, or unless the Holy Spirit knocks you in the head and tells you to get you a, a, a concordance or, or a Lexington or something to look up rising again. Because rising in again and uh, many in Israel in the English, you know, that's why it's looked over people. But now, do you want to know what the word rising again means? Well, I'm going to tell you what it means. In the Greek, which it, the scripture was wrote in Greek, and, and the, the devout Simeon, uh, was was one of the Sabbath scholars that helped translate the uh, the, the uh, Hebrew into Greek. So I would say that he understood Greek real well. And so he's prophesying here in Greek. And so the rising again, uh, people, is the resurrection of the dead. What? You telling me that rising again that I've read all these years, that I've listened to preachers talk about when they would read the scripture, and they never knew it was the resurrection of the dead of many in Israel? Well, people, when did that happen? Can you give me a scripture where there was a resurrection of many, polis? That means a great number in Israel. Yes, I can. Matthew 27, 51, 52. Christ gives up the Ruach. Then uh, there's an earthquake. The temple, the veil is rent from top to bottom. The rocks are rent and the graves break open. And many of the dead bo uh, bodies, saints, many, polis, great number of the bodies of the saints come out, rise out of the graves after his resurrection Three days later, according to scripture, people. And brother Simeon is prophesying to Mary that Yahshua is set for the greatest slaughter, purposeful tribulation of 144,000 two-year-old male sons of Israel, every one of them sealed in their own order. And then approximately 30 years later, 28 years later, when Christ goes to the cross at the uh, uh, the, the appointed Moed Passover and gives up the Ruach, and God marks the graves with this earthquake, and through the spirit of the Father that resurrects Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, he resurrects 144,000 because the prophet Simeon, the devout man, said, this child will be set for the fall and the rise again of the resurrection of the dead of many in Israel because he is the man-child. Revelations, the 12th chapter. you believe that? Now, People, I am going now, there's still yet the third prophecy of this dunamis scripture. This unbelievable dynamite of a scripture. This is the power of God, and this man was full of the Holy Spirit. Now, the third part of this prophecy this miracle, this sign, sign in the Greek means supernatural miracle, people. So this miracle, what miracle? The great slaughter, the fall in Israel, that, that Yahshua would be uh, appointed or set for, but also he is appointed or set to resurrect the many dead in Israel. The resurrection of the dead, Anastasius. Or Anastasius. It means to be resurrected from the dead. Now, the third part of this scripture, right here, this miracle will be spoken against of. 
That word against means they will deny it. Uh, they will speak against it. It will be contradicted. Now, let me ask you that. Is that a true prophecy? Because, see, people, it's been covered up. It's not out there, people. But God now is revealing it. God is revealing this, people. Now, my hope and my prayer is whoever hears this, that it will convict your heart. And, and if there's any uh, messianics or bishops or pastors or any of you people out there that teach prophecy, women, men, whoever, I'm hoping that the Holy Spirit will lead you to this old gray-headed 65-year-old retired fireman in Tennessee that is bringing this message because God, uh, because God has revealed this to me, and it's you know, I'm hoping that some of you preachers and pastors out there get a hold of this and tell your sheep about such a great prophecy, people, to fulfill Scripture. Now, people, as I close, he resurrected 144,000 children of Israel 2,000 years ago. Now, Lord willing, and I continue in my studies uh, and reveal things to you, you're going to find this changes everything, people. There is no replacement theology of uh, the church has replaced Israel. And guess what? You can get mad at me and stone the message, but for you rapture people that preach that Christ is going to rapture you out, when he sailed 144,000 innocent children of Israel and allowed Satan through Herod to behead these, and I can prove that to you in Scripture, and you think that he's going to rapture us out? Now, I'm not mad at any of you. I am that compassion and hoping to wake you up out of your sleep. Our Lord and Savior who resurrected those 144,000 is coming back for his wheat harvest. Matthew, the 13th chapter, let the tares and the wheat grow up together. The harvest is at the end of the age. The two witnesses are going to die by the beast, people. And Lord willing, if I can do the two witnesses, they are not Elijah and Moses. You got one right. They are Elijah. But I will prove to you by a no shadow of a doubt who the second one is. And it's not Moses. And if you, when you understand who he is, you will know that we're going through the great tribulation, people. But it's okay. Because if this don't add to your faith, 144,000 that was resurrected 2,000 years ago, so be it. Now may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may that spirit witness to your spirit and to the assemblies.